Hey again. Thanks for joining us on another edition of Ren and Rob Cook. And this time we have something special lined up for you, which is bacon pastrami. Basically, it's cured pork belly with pastrami spices and pastrami rub, which is equal parts coriander and black pepper. First off, you want to weigh your pork belly because you'll be wanting 2% total salt and pink salt for the cure. In addition to that, you'll add about 2% brown sugar and pastrami pickling spices, which I took from Michael Roman's book, Salumi. In addition to that, you want to crush some garlic, about four cloves per pound, and get all the oils going. Here I had some leftover pork belly from doing some Filipino tocino, as well as some chashu for ramen. So you're going to bag that up and then add your salt and pickling spices. Mix the salt, curing salt, and pickling spices together well. Make sure you try to disperse it evenly as much as possible. Add your garlic and just kind of rub it in all together, making sure you're covering all sides. Try to remove as much air from the bag as possible before you zip it. So here I just folded it, just making sure I'm removing as much air as possible before I do the last part of the zip. And as you can see, it's well coated. Always label your bags so you know when you started curing or how old any product is. Put that in the fridge for seven days, turning it over every few days so that the cure evenly distributes. After seven days or more, up to 15 days or so, two weeks, take it out of the bag and rinse off all the pickling spice in the cure under cold water. you pat it dry from there we're adding equal parts coriander and black pepper for this roughly two pound pork belly I added two tablespoons of each and using my Nutribullet I just grinded that to a fairly coarse grind nothing specific. I used a mustard binder. After you smoke it you don't really taste it just to make sure that the rub sticks to the pork belly. Make sure you coat all sides of the belly and then just try to evenly apply the rub to the pork belly. As we all know with rub, you don't actually rub it in, but you just pat it in. I like to go heavier on the fat side of the pork belly to kind of balance out the richness of the fat. After that, get your Weber started. I have this going at about 250. Stick a probe in your pork belly to the thickest part of it as much as possible and then get smoking. Here's how it looks about two hours in. As you can see the crust is starting to set. It's starting to look a little moist with the fat rendering. And this is just about ready to pull after about three hours and the internal temperature reaches 190 Fahrenheit. It's 
looking pretty good. Just had to give it a taste test because I couldn't resist. However, what you want to do with bacon is let it rest overnight. And that taste test was a little bit salty, but as you can see, it's really juicy. Give that a rest in the fridge overnight to let it cool so you can slice it. Plus, the salt will start to equalize and it won't be as salty as, you know, when it first gets done cooking. Right out of the fridge, you want to begin slicing. That makes it easier to work with. With homemade bacon, I like to go with really thick slices. You just can do more with it. Eat it as a main or, you know, add it to a sandwich, as we'll show you later. As you can see, that's looking pretty darn good. When you're ready to cook, add it to a pan. And for these, I went about medium heat, just until they look nice and brown on all sides. So just cook it to your preference. You can put it in an oven at 420 for about 15 to 25 minutes to your crunch preference. But in this case, we were making it as both rice bowls and for BLTs, and they turned out perfect at this color. I like a lot of mayo on my BLTs. So I added a bunch of that on both sides of the bread, add some tomatoes, and be sure to salt the tomatoes. And you gotta go with shreddis, shredded lettuce. Now take your bacon for BLTs and just kind of cut that in half. Listen to that crunch. Here's a close-up of the bacon. Color looks pretty good. As you can see, that crust really set in well to just add that burst of flavor to homemade bacon. My wife decided to have a little rice bowl, which we added a homemade ramen egg to, as well as some fresh cucumbers and tomatoes and brown rice. I was really craving a BLT, so they made me one. Always cut into triangles versus squares on your sandwiches. It just tastes better and the obligatory eating shot. In a BLT, the bacon is just perfect. It's meaty on the inside, but crunchy on the outside. The shreddis just adds that cool, refreshing bite to it, along with the tomatoes. And the mayonnaise just ties it all together. I like to use soft, cheap white or whole wheat bread. And man, it's just a perfect balance. The bacon after resting in the fridge for a day is not as salty. It's nicely balanced with the spices and once you have this you'll see that homemade bacon is just so much better than store-bought bacon it's a process to make but when you get a big enough pork belly you'll have some that you can freeze for days so with that said we hope you enjoyed the video and we hope you get uh, a chance to make it yourself at home if you do comment below and let us know how it went send us some pictures and you can follow us on instagram at ren and rob cook and we'd love to see what your results are if you enjoyed the video or if it was helpful to you, please subscribe to us. As we release more videos, you'll get alerted and we hope you continue watching. Thank you guys and stay safe.